Hey, it's Chessie from Squeegeeing Inc. and welcome back to another Printer's Corner. This is where I answer your questions on social media and go into a little bit more detail. Today's episode is all about opening and exporting PDFs within Separation Studio NXT and what are halftones and how do we use them in screen printing. If you have a question for us and you'd like us to answer it on one of our videos, you can use hashtag Printer's Corner and we'll pick that up and answer it in a future episode. Our first question today is from Brian P and they were asking, how do you get your Separation Studio NXT to open a PDF file? I've tried and tried to use a PDF file, but I get an error message saying it can't open the file type, crying emoji. I have actually done some little tests of my own using Separation Studio NXT to try and break it and try and see what types of files it couldn't open. I did, however, go and do some like weird Word documents and I saved those as PDFs and I tried to open those and then it started to struggle. I think the first thing to look at here is to make sure that the PDF was actually created and saved and exported within either Corel Draw or Adobe Illustrator. If you're trying to take a file type and just change the ending to, say if it was a JPEG or something, and you're just changing the en ending to PDF and trying to open that, then that's not really the same and it's not creating the same kind of data in the file. So that might be where Separation Studio NXT is struggling to open your particular file type. I have actually written down this really key bit of information that I found really useful when I was starting. And it's like what type of file types you can put in and what results you're gonna get out. What I found is that if you're using a TIFF, a JPEG or a PNG, these are files which are made with RGB. So they're not CMYK, they're RGB, which means they're made up of red, green, and blue, and they're raster images. If you put those in, then Separation Studio NXT is going to do what it calls spot process, sim process. So this is basically an algorithm that he uses, and it's basically gonna make it into lots of dots and each screen is going to be exposed with that sim process effect and the dots as you layer them all up so say if there's four colors four different screens lined up all those dots in combination with each other then give you a larger spectrum of colors so it's sim process simulated process it's similar to what people think of as CMYK printing, but it's a bit more advanced and you don't have to use special process inks. It's actually really, really cool. And it is a technology that's been out there for a long time. So if you're using TIFF, PNG and JPEG files, it's going to do spot process sim process over here. However, if you want it to do spot color, which is where you've got solid areas of ink going down, no dots, just like a big chunk of ink like you would any vector file, then you need to make the, the file in Illustrator or Corel Draw, and then you save it as a PDF. And then when it's opened up, it's, it's not gonna do all the sim process stuff, it's just gonna do the spot process. So then it's like nice chunky layers which you're used to printing as a screen printer. There you go, they're the two kind of like areas and the two kind of methods that Separation Studio Next is going to treat your artwork with. So it's just an interesting thing to, to bear in mind. Our next question is from Senpei Tricks, and they've asked, thanks for the inf informative video. Is there a way to export it as a PDF so the film positives can be printed by a screen printing supply shop as I don't have an inkjet printer myself? Thanks again. Yes. You don't even have to look to export the file, you simply save it. And when you're in Separation Studio NXT, you just go save, and then it's gonna to wanna to put the ending on there as a PSD, which is a Photoshop file. And you can open that up in Adobe, but you can, I've actually done it in Illustrator and both Illustrator and Photoshop. And then when you open the file up within Adobe, 
it's going to kind of look like just one layer all merged together and you're thinking oh crap it hasn't got all the layers and then even in the layers it hasn't separated them all out but what you need to look at is the channels next to the layers tab if you click the channels then what you're going to see is it's got maybe it might even have rgb or other different channels above it but underneath it's going to have the the layers that you actually separated in separation studio and they're going to be really clearly labeled how you labeled them in sep studio then it's just down to the person who you've given the file to to open it up in there and then just print it using the channels that they're specifying it's literally a tick box you untick the ones that you don't want it to print Tick the four that you want it to print or how many layers you've separated your image into and it just works like normal. And if they've got a RIP software, which hopefully they have, then they'll know how to do that because it's exactly the same as how they've been processing all of their other separations for screen printers. So yes, don't bother exporting it or thinking about that. Just save it and it will give it the little PSD prefix and you're good to go and you can send that to anyone who has a RIP software and normally prints film positives. Our final question is from Atom CFL and they said, starting to look into screen printing, would you care to explain half tones? Thank you for all you do for, to help knuckleheads like me. When we're screen printing, if you think about screen printing as basically using a stencil to reproduce artwork and we tend to be trying to reproduce or simulate what's on the digital screen but as we've just got a stencil and not pixels and you know uh, a display like a normal screen we have to try and make it as simple as possible and basically the stencil and the emulsion can only hold a certain amount of detail so what we do is we take for example, the most common use of halftones is in photography. You're using like a photograph and what you're trying to do is not have flat, solid layers of colour. You want the tonal range, so you want dark areas going into light and into white even. To simulate the tonal range of the greys and the blacks, we basically convert that image into little dots and when you're actually looking at the image from a little bit of a distance, your eyes can barely read the dots if you make them fine enough. You can have different size dots and they give the different effects of tonal range. I've actually got a chart on squeegeeinc.co.uk that you can download for free. It's kind of like a, a half tone checklist. It shows you what dot size you can get away with on different meshes because different meshes and emulsions and things can hold different resolutions of images. So you can have really tiny little dots on a 90T screen for example and that would be like a 51 LPI. So a 90T mesh in the UK is a 230 in the US. And then say if you want a lower mesh screen, so a 43, then you're not going to be able to get away with finer dots. They're going to have to be a little bit bigger. And then they're going to have to be bigger still if you go lower in your mesh size. You can have it as a visual effect or you can try and get the dots as small as possible on the different meshes. So hopefully that download will really help you out figuring out how fine you can go with the dots on different meshes. To round up this episode, which is about opening and exporting PDFs with Separation Studio NXT, you're going to find that you can open PDFs in Separation Studio as long as you've made them from a proper source. So you've actually made them in Illustrator or Photoshop or Corel Draw and save them from there into a PDF. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and if there's anything you wanted to add in the comments, please feel free and I'll try and get back to you on there. Or if there's any other further questions you've got on any of these little micro topics, please use hashtag printers corner for me to quickly and easily pick those up and answer them in even more detail if we need to go there.